Hi, BC family, and welcome to your midweek devotion. So this week, I want to talk about faith and walking by faith. So each one of us has the same measure of faith. So the Bible tells us in Romans 12, 3, that God has given each of us the same measure of faith. And in Matthew 17, 20, it talks of faith as if it were a seed. It talks about it being like a mustard seed. And I like thinking of faith as a seed because we're all given the seed of faith. But what we do with it and what we do with that seed matters. So that's what how I like to view faith a little bit. Like we've all been given the same seed. So some people, they take that seed of faith and they develop it and strengthen their faith over time by the word of God. But their faith is no different than yours or mine, right? We all have that same capability. But some of us progress in it and some of us do not, right? Pastors have been talking on Sunday about how faith answers. And I've been reading a book by Regine Wilson that is titled Faith Has a Voice. And that voice is always a voice of victory. That's how faith answers, right? <clears throat> so in this book, he said, faith is not just a thing we activate when we need something. It changes who we are, how we think, how we operate, and how we walk out this life. I really loved that. So let's take that example of a seed again. If I never water it or give it sun or pull the weeds around it, then that faith, that seed is not producing, it's not growing. And when a situation or circumstances arises and I need my faith, I sit there and I pour the water and I'm pulling up the weeds. Not much is going to happen in that moment because that's just one step of growing that seed, right? The Bible talks about a man who built his house on the rock. This might be a better example. <coughs> and when the storm came, it stood, right? But imagine if that storm came and that's when you run over and you start building that foundation, right? It wouldn't have worked out all that great. So the same is true of faith. So I want you to have that visual. So you can't suddenly, like he said in his book, it's not just the thing we activate when we need it. You can't suddenly start running out and starting to build your house when a storm has happened. It doesn't work quite the same way. So let me explain a little bit. So when a symptom comes on your body or a problem arises, if you're developing in your faith walk, then you should know how to answer, right? Immediately without even processing it through your reasoning or logic. Um, I think about that seed. If, you're, if you've been growing and cultivating that seed, then when a problem arises, you don't run to Google to find out your answer. You go straight, straight to the scriptures to find your answer. You have that automatic response. So in church, we've been learning about Daniel, and he definitely had a spirit of faith about him. So when the king said, do this, right, he didn't go back to his room and think it through. He didn't talk over the pros and cons and make a list or suddenly dive into, well, what if I say no? What if? What are the consequences? No, he had an automatic faith-filled response to what he was, the problem that he was facing. The circumstance in that moment, he had an automatic response, and it was a faith filled response. It showed you how developed he was and grounded in God and what he believed is truth. He didn't even consider what the consequence would be, right? So Pastor Ray Jean in his book said, the truth is you can spend your life putting out fires and being pulled left and right by trouble. You can always feel behind and find yourself running to catch up. Sounds like a normal day sometimes, right? You can live overwhelmed by the next situation circumstance or symptom or you can learn to walk through life empowered by the spirit of faith that struck such a chord with me i think it's like on page two and i was still there rereading it over and over and it caused me to think how am i living my life am i living empowered by the spirit of faith <coughs> or going every which way exhausted and overwhelmed am i growing and developing my seed or is it just sitting there in the ground right that's how you can gauge your walk of faith how is it progressing? I encourage you to stop and take an honest look. When every problem arises, are you overwhelmed, stressed, putting out those fires left and right? Or are you walking through those problems filled full of joy, full of peace, right? Having grown and developed in your faith and developing it as you're going through the situation, right? Your peace meter really will show you too how much are you walking by faith and how much are you not. Are you stopping and seeking God and his word, even for the smallest situation? God's word has an answer to everything in it, right? <coughs> so really the question becomes, whose voice are you listening to? Because remember, faith is the voice of victory, 
right? So the measure of faith that is developed and strengthened in you comes from one place, the word of God, right? Romans 10, 17 tells us faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you want to be the person who's developing their seed of faith and growing in your spiritual walk, then you got to be the person who's spending time reading, studying, and meditating on God's word. It's the only way to achieve the strength of faith you desire. You know, on Sunday, I talked about how the Bible says that we fight the good fight of faith. It's a fight. So if you're fighting a battle, don't you want to be prepared ahead of time? That's how you get prepared. Remember, you don't want to be pulling out scriptures out of desperation, building your house when the storm comes. You want it already built on a solid foundation. <clears throat> so some of you know that I've gone through a little bit of a journey in the last month, but I'm going to quickly recap it for those who don't, because I want to talk about how I have personally grown in my faith walk during this last month. So I'm just going to take a small portion of the last month and just go over that piece. So in a 13 day period, I was in the ER three times, urgent care twice. I had two chest x-rays done. I had an ultrasound. They had to do an IND. It's kind of where they cut you open and stuff. I had blood work done and an emergency CT scan. And in the middle of that health crisis going on, I was having financial crisis, our washing machine broke down, our water heater broke, and I was in charge of our church's week-long VBS, Vacation Bible School, during this time. Now, why am I telling you this? Because each of us are going through challenging things, and sometimes you don't know how challenging a person's life is because they've grown so far in their faith walk, they've learned how to have that peace and that joy about them, right? But during some of these things, it really causes you to decide what do you believe? Now, I said this to say there are many times that I had to remind myself in this journey, whose voice am I listening to? It's like a constant growing thing. You're constantly pulling out those weeds and refocusing your thoughts, right? One of those times, um, I had a phone call from the doctor and it went like this. <coughs> Four days into VBS, it had just finished for the day and the doctor called and they said, hey, we saw your second chest x-ray and it's not good. In fact, we need you to take yourself to the emergency room right now and have an emergency CT scan done. We are highly concerned um, about what we see in your lungs. That was the phone call I got. And in that moment, I would like to say I had, you know, my faith was there and I started quoting scripture and I was great, but was not because it felt just like we had already had so much and this just leveled up the ante of, are you kidding me? And I remember I did, I started to cry and you could feel this overwhelmingness take over. I mean, how many of you can relate where you just feel an overwhelming come down? Like, I can't do this anymore. I can't keep doing this. Like what's happening? And I could feel the thoughts coming in, right? Thoughts are real, emotions are real, fear is real. But here are some key takeaways. One, I was surrounded by godly people who were like-minded and spoke life and victory. They spoke the same voice of faith. So that right there is really important. Who are you walking life out with, right? I didn't broadcast everything I was going through on social media. I didn't tell a ton of people why, because I only wanted one voice being spoken to me. In those times, you don't want other voices speaking to you. You want the voice of victory being spoken to you. And in that moment, that's what I had. Daniel had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He had people that had the same mindset, the same voice being spoken to them so that they could speak it into each other's lives, right? Two, I got into my car to drive myself to the ER and I knew I had to change that voice. I had to stop this overwhelmingness that was consuming me, right? I said this once before and Hagen coined it. He said, you can't keep birds from flying over your head. Can't stop that but you can keep them from nesting in your hair, right? Meaning I didn't, I couldn't stop the emotions from coming. I couldn't stop the thoughts from popping into my head, the what ifs and the what if it is what they said they thought they saw, you know, I couldn't stop that. But what I could do is keep it from staying. I could keep it from housing itself in me and taking root in me. So I put on raise a hallelujah and sing it all the way to the ER. Jesus said I was healed, but in that moment, my physical body, last week I talked about spirit, soul, and body, my physical body was not healed, right? So what does faith do? It calls those things that be not as though they were because it's the voice of victory. So I spoke out, I am healed. I am blessed. I am highly favored, right? You have, that's how you grow and develop in your faith walk. I had choices of what I could say, of what I could think on, of what I could allow to take over, right? So what happened? I had to make adjustments 
in my faith walk. In his book, Pastor Ray had a great example. He said, when you're driving on a straight road, you can't just let go of the steering wheel and the car is gonna keep going straight. It's not gonna happen, right? You have to keep making these little adjustments to stay in your lane. I liked that so much. <coughs> faith is that way. You have to keep making those adjustments to stay in your lane. I was going out of my lane with the feelings and emotions that I was going through and I had to make those adjustments to get back into my lane of faith, right? You don't want to end up in a ditch miles from your lane and have a crisis hit. No, you want to be in that lane that will take you through your circumstance or problem where you're going to thrive on the other end of it rather than just survive it, right? So make those adjustments this week. Keep in the lane of faith, the right lane. Work on growing and developing your faith walk. And when you're doing that, then you're able to live an empowered, spirit-filled life, not an overwhelmed one. Have a great week. Bye.